the Arizona Supreme Court rules the 1864 ban on abortion is still the law of the land. So now, uh, Joe Hazinga, there is renewed interest in recalling a couple of the judges who voted in favor of the ban. If you recall, the Arizona Supreme Court has seven justices. One, Bill Montgomery recused himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then the final ruling was four to two in favor of returning to the 1864 law. Two of those justices are up for retention. In Arizona, we have uh, justices that are appointed by the governor, and then every six years you vote whether or not to retain them. If you vote to not retain a justice, then they are replaced by the current governor. So two of the justices are up for retention, and there's been a campaign underway to try to get them booted, to not retain. And the percentage is pretty high, too. I think six in the history of Arizona have not been retained. But it's not like a 50-50. It's not if you get more... Oh, no. You have to have have something like 90%. Correct. Uh, But it is... I mean, most people are like, yeah, whatever. It's it's kind of a whatever type of vote. Most people don't don't touch that portion of the ballot. Most people can't name one of the Arizona Supreme Court justices. Bollock. Nice job. Well done. And I already mentioned Montgomery, so I think we're covered. I believe Bollock is one who is up for retention. So if you combine that with this mad scramble now to provide care to Arizona women in other states, you may have read that in Arizona we're working with California to try to get Calif- to try to get Arizona doctors licensed in California to perform the abortion. It's just we've got a patchwork of activist efforts now to circumvent the decision that is and, and the circumvention is bothering some of the hardline pro-lifers. So if you're somebody that says, listen, I believe life is at conception and anything after that is murder, and I don't believe in that, and I want the, I want every child that's been conceived to have a chance to see the light of day, then it would bother you tremendously to see people going to other states to get abortions. It would bother you that the Supreme Court said, well, let's give it, let's give it two weeks plus another 45 days. Um, because that's what the law says, basically. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on this. Are we putting the cart before the horse, though? How so? Because the legislature down at the Capitol. Down there. At the Capitol. That's where the legislature does their thing. At the Capitol. Very good. You know, that, that, We're on the same page. So they're meeting a big one day a week right now. You could argue they're working one day a week. They say they're working all the time, but they just happen to convene one day a week. Why does this sound like office space, right? When they ask, like, on any given week, I do maybe 15 minutes of real work. Mm. It feels like the Arizona one of my legislature. my movies of all time. Isn't it great? It feels like the legislature is like, hey, Peter. Do you think we should try to go down to the legislature? As oh. the Bobs and just say, what do you do here? Yeah. Because they don't do anything. So one day a week, they're down there. But Republicans have come out earlier this week, and they now say that an abortion ban repeal will advance in the state house tomorrow. Oh, they do? Now, it's not tomorrow yet. I'm not sure if you know that. Very good. So they meet on Wednesday. Yes. And they say that this is going to advance. Last week, our own Heidi Hommel was down there, and we talked to her about it, and it seemed like a lot of... Screaming, yelling, praying. Let's just adjourn for another week. A whole lot of uh, not... um, Acting. That's a good word, Chris. A whole lot of not that was going on. So just point of reference, the procedure on this is that before you can have a vote to repeal the 1864 law, Mm -hmm. you have to have a vote to decide if you're going to vote to repeal the 1864 law. Mm -hmm. In other words, they all go, hey, we have this vote coming up. Who wants to vote on this? Raise your hand. That's the vote before the vote. Hmm. What we've seen before is because there's a very slim majority of Republicans in the House, the Republicans largely are backed by the pro-life groups and largely they back the pro-life movement, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have here is you've got Republicans that are saying, whoa, I think that 1864 ban goes too far, and if it comes up for repeal, I will vote to repeal it. And then they say, okay, do you want to vote on repeal? They're like, I mean, I don't want to actually have to vote. No. So what they're doing is, rather than going on record saying, I voted against a repeal or I voted for the repeal, they are saying, I don't want to vote that way they can't be held accountable for voting to or against the repeal. They're still kind of doing that here. 
Representative okay. David Cook says that enough Republicans will join the Democrats in the House this week yeah. and vote to repeal Arizona's you know near total abortion ban. If there, it gets to a vote, there's 29 Democrats in the House, right? And they've tried twice to alter the House rules to vote, but they've already fallen one vote short of the 31 that they need. Right. Now get this. The one they expect is Cook, by the way. Cook says that they will change when the chamber re- that, that'll change when the chamber reconvenes tomorrow. He says you're going to have 31. His quote is, "You're going to have 31 that are going to put it on that board." Cook didn't say who will cast the 31st vote, but it won't be him. So they got so they twisted somebody else over. So Matt Gress is the other Republican that has voted to have the vote. Why is he speaking out that it's not going because to be him? I think we all waited for him to do it. What he what he's saying is, the vote counting has come through, and even without my vote, it's going to go to a vote. I know this sounds so confusing. Yeah, even though Cook supports repealing Arizona's abortion ban, right? Cook says that he won't support the motion, this is what you're talking about, yep. necessary to overrule GOP leadership to make that happen. Okay. So here's why you have to have a vote to have the vote. Yeah, Gress is the only one so far. So you've got Ben Toma, who's the House Speaker. Mm-hmm. And I've seen this happen in other places, too. In fact, we see it happen on Capitol Hill. He's pro-ban. So he's pro-ban, but, but ultimately he's pro-party. Yeah. So what happens is you've got a Speaker that says, does my party support this bill? And if they have more support from the opposing party than they do from their own party, they won't bring it to a vote. This is why Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House and the the U.S. House of Representatives, is facing... uh, uh, Recall? Well, maybe recall. I haven't yet. But he's facing criticism at the very least. Because the the foreign aid bill that they passed, which is very similar to the one that uh, Kirsten Sinema put together with a border bill that... Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world are not happy with them. Remember when we talked about the border bill that never made it out of the Senate? It was this foreign aid bill with a border package put on it. Now they get the foreign aid, but not the border package. Right. Genius. So Johnson says, we got to support this. This is important. The Democrats overwhelmingly support it. The Republicans are about half and half. The Reagan Republicans support the foreign aid. The MAGA Republicans say, no, we're isolationists. No, we're not going to support that. So they're not getting that support from the Republicans, which means you have the Marjorie Taylor Greens that are saying he put forth a Democratic bill, even though the majority wants it. If it came from the other party, it's a no-go. Mm-hmm. That's how politics works today. So that's what's going on here. Toma isn't going to bring that to a vote. It takes a vote to overrule him in order to say we're going to bring it to a vote. And supposedly someone from the GOP side who is, in addition to Matt Grass, who makes one and is not David Cook, is going to be the second person to come forward. To override Toma's vote. To then to, get a vote. To, to have a – oh, man, this is confusing. You know, it's already getting messy with the ideological sides arguing over when the law goes into effect. You know, they're arguing that some people are saying it should go into effect this week. Some people are saying not until June. So I always wonder what kind of discretion the prosecutors have in enforcing that. Thanks for watching The Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.